Welcome back. In this morning's Project Safe Schools, we're taking a deeper look at what's next for Tulsa Public Schools. And to do that, we're joined by somebody that knows probably more than anybody what's going on right now. Tulsa Public School Superintendent Dr. Deborah Gist. Dr. Gist, thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning, Travis. Yeah, I know it was a uh, long night, uh, almost a six hour meeting ending all the way into the wee hours of the morning. So I uh, definitely appreciate you waking up early for us today. And you know, in that meeting, you all discussed the, the three possibilities, your recommendations for the board on what's next for students. How do you think that meeting went last night? Well, we had an excellent discussion. I'm so grateful to our team and to the Board of Education for coming together and and putting that much time into, into a discussion. And we have a lot more work still to do. And these are very complex issues and they're hugely important uh, for our city overall and for individual families and children and for our team members, our teachers and support professionals. So it's a very big decision. Uh, we we're all taking it very seriously and we were, we were glad to have that much time together to discuss it. Yeah, and you know, other folks that are taking it very seriously, parents, uh, you know, we, we had some parents rallying outside the meeting last night, holding up signs saying, my child, my choice. There was one kid that had a sign that said, my house is not a school, my mom is not a teacher. Uh, but then on the other end of the spectrum, you, know, you have parents that, you know, have four or five kids that say, there, uh, there's no way I'm sending my kids back to school right now. There's no way. How do, how do you as superintendent take those two extremes and, and meet in the middle to, to kind of determine what's best for, for all students in the district. Right, well, we're definitely hearing all of those perspectives that you just described, Travis, and then all kinds of other perspectives as well, including the perspectives of the members of our team, our teachers and, and our other support professionals in our schools. And um, I would say that what I would not uh, want anyone to believe is that what we are recommending is, a, is an attempt to meet people in the middle. Um, you know, doing that, uh, you, you, just, you just end up with everybody being dissatisfied. Uh, that's not our goal. We're not, we're not seeking to, to uh, try to appease anyone, but instead we're just listening very much to um, how they're feeling, what they're thinking, what they're experiencing. So we can try to put our best foot forward in a way that says we've read all the research, we've looked at all the data, we've heard the perspectives, and we have a proposal that begins to phase our students back into school, which is what we wanted all along is for our children to be in school, but to do it in a way that we have confidence, we can have conditions that are reasonably safe for our students and for our team. And you mentioned uh, the, the research that went into these decisions and the, 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 the folks who, who you are listening to. Who did you consult with and, and how did you come to these three recommendations and why was it three recommendations? Why not just one blanket recommendation and suggestion to say, hey, I'm the superintendent and here's what I think needs to happen? Well, it is one recommendation, but we made sure to share the caveats about uh, what we would do if our conditions uh, worsened or if our, or if our conditions improved more significantly. So we want to be flexible. We want to make sure that we're paying attention to the data and that our plans change accordingly. Um, we listen to many experts, uh, uh, research studies, um, uh, um, stories that have analyzed education from not just around the country, but from around the world uh, for systems that have returned to school. Uh, we also, of course, right here locally have a team of medical experts who have been advising us. Um, a number of them were on our call last night, Dr. Dart in particular from the Tulsa Health Department has joined our call and stayed on. He was on our on our uh, meeting well past midnight, uh, weighing in and making sure that he was um, helping to support the board and our team as we discussed these important issues. Absolutely, and I, I, I appreciate the clarification on, on the, it's one recommendation, but with a few different pathways and different avenues of, of how things might go, because if there's anything we know that's very unpredictable, we can't really tell the future here. My last question for you, I mean, after the conversation last night, hearing all of all these opinions, getting in all this input, how do you think the board is gonna vote next week? Well, um, you know, we we want to work uh, over the next week. We have a lot of engagement. So all day today, um, I have various 
um, moments that when we're reaching out to different groups, uh, the Tulsa PTA, our community advisory group, our teachers. Uh, we have a big parent, uh, all parent meeting tonight. So we're gonna continue to get feedback and to listen. And, uh, and then we'll bring a recommendation to the Board of Education next week, which um, will maybe this recommendation, it may be some version of that based on everything that we're hearing. And I'm confident that we, will, that we the board, uh, will come to a decision next week so that we can let our families know uh, what our plans are and our teachers can begin to plan and, and implement. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Once again, Superintendent Dr. Deborah Giss with Tulsa Public Schools. Thanks so much for taking time this morning. We appreciate it.